Hi, it's Katrina. From giant sea monsters to entire ancient bison, here are nine amazing things found frozen in ice. Number 9. Viking Sword In late 2017, reindeer hunters discovered a 1,100-year-old Viking-era sword between two large rocks in the mountains of Upland in Norway. They made the incredible find at an altitude of 5,380 feet, most likely constituting the highest elevation a Viking sword has ever been discovered. Accompanied by archaeologists, the weapons finders returned to the site, hoping to find more artifacts and perhaps even a Viking burial. But their search was fruitless, making the sword the only Viking-era artifact ever found there. Someone hiking through the mountains may have dropped the sword and may have even died nearby, according to experts, who can do little more than speculate about how the weapon ended up where it was found. It contains traces of lichen, showing that there were periods when the sword was exposed, and others where it spent a great deal of time buried in the snow. But the artifact should be covered in more lichen than it is, based on the short summers it sat through for around 1,000 years before being discovered. Theoretically, the weapon should also be more corroded. The sword is in excellent condition and would be fully functional today if it were fitted with a new handle, according to scientists at the University of Oslo Museum of Cultural History. Experts believe that the sword's remarkable state of preservation owes to its somewhat dry location between two large boulders and the lack of corrosive salt in the high-altitude environment. Number 8. Antarctic Oasis in 2017, scientists from the Australian National University announced the discovery of a warm oasis located throughout a web of hidden ice caves beneath Mount Erebus. Temperatures sit at around 77 degrees Fahrenheit within the subterranean system, thanks to a comfortable combination of the volcano's extreme heat and the blistering Antarctic cold. You could wear a t-shirt in there and be pretty comfortable, said lead researcher Sarah Dwen Fraser. Sarah Dwen and her colleagues tested soil samples from inside the caves and discovered DNA evidence of algae, mosses, small animals, and possibly even an arthropod. Based on these findings, the team suggested that Antarctica contains yet undiscovered modern-day life forms. On the other hand, study participant Lori Connell explained that wind may have carried the genetic material to the continent from elsewhere. The first step in determining if there are present-day creatures living within these cave systems involves having biologists search for evidence of these animals. Researchers are also developing a 3D model of the cave system to make it easier to navigate and to facilitate the discovery of more caves. So far, no early humans or aliens have been found there. Number 7. Largest Ever Sea Monster Fossil a late 2019 study published in the journal Cretaceous Research details the discovery of the largest known elasmosaur on a remote island off the Antarctic Peninsula. Researchers believe the creature hailed from the Aristonectis genus, whose fossilized remains differ noticeably from those of other elasmosaurs, with shorter necks and larger skulls. Prior to the excavation of the skeleton, Aristonectis' place among the dinosaur family tree was a long-standing mystery. Scientists didn't have enough parts of the animal to work with in order to classify it. Purdue University researcher William Zinsmeister spotted a potential candidate in 1989 on Seymour Island, located off the northern tip of the Antarctic Peninsula. Lacking the resources to excavate the fossils himself, Zinsmeister alerted the Argentina Antarctic Institute of his find. Over many years and at a snail's pace, Scientists chipped away at the site during the short summer times, which lasted for just a few weeks, and sometimes didn't happen at all. The excavation was finally finished in 2017. Based on the evidence, researchers estimate the dinosaur grew up to 40 feet long from head to tail and weighed between 11.8 and 14.8 tons. It lived near the very end of the Cretaceous period, roughly 30,000 years before the mass extinction event that killed the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. The creature's size suggests that there was plenty of marine life to feed on in its southerly habitat, indicating that aquatic species were likely doing fine right up until the mass extinction event. Number 6. Antarctic Explorer's Journal Explorer George Murray Levick, a young surgeon, participated in Robert Falcon Scott's 1910-1913 British Antarctic Expedition, also known as the Terra Nova Mission, as a member of the Northern Party. 
The explorers aimed to become the first to reach the South Pole, but not only did the competing Amundsen party beat Scott's team there, some of Scott's Southern Party crew never made it back home. Levick survived, but his journal somehow got left behind. In summer 2014, during an annual melting period in Antarctica, his lost journal miraculously appeared in the ice as a clump of soaking wet paper. Somehow, over 100 years later, conservationists were able to painstakingly reconstruct and digitize its contents. In the diary, Levick recorded historical and zoological observations, including penguin reproductive and other behaviors as he witnessed an entire breeding season of an Adelaide penguin colony. The ambitious explorer also documented his experience spending seven months stranded in a small, cramped ice cave in 1912, when the Terra Nova vessel was unable to reach shore to retrieve the crew. Following the horrendous ordeal, Levick embarked on the first step of his journey back to civilization, walking 200 miles to the base camp and dropping his diary along the way. Number 5. Massive Valleys In recent years, scientists discovered three incredibly vast valleys hidden beneath hundreds of feet of Antarctic ice. The findings comprise the first batch of data yielded in the European Space Agency-funded Polar Gap project, which began in 2015, and aimed to better understand the South Pole's geography and gravity field. A study published in the journal Geophysical Research Letters documented the project's two-year aerial survey, which measured the landscape using gravity and magnetism sensors, as well as radar and laser technology. At over 217 miles long, roughly the distance between New York and Boston, and 21 miles wide, Foundation Trough is the largest of the three newly discovered valleys. The Patuchent Trough is the second largest, measuring 186 miles long and over 9 miles wide. At 93 miles long and 18 miles wide, the offset rift basin is the smallest of the trio. Surprisingly, none of the valleys can be seen by the naked eye, however, at least for now. All three are situated in an area west of the South Pole, where the east and west Antarctic ice sheets melt, known as the Ice Divide. Here, there's what scientists call a bottleneck, which is helping to hold the Antarctic ice together with the help of mountains. Melting ice threatens to weaken the bottleneck, however, potentially speeding up the channelizing ice flows that carry ice out into the oceans, thereby increasing the rate at which the ice sheets vanish. Number 4. Steppe Bison Remains in 2011, members of northern Siberia's Yukagir tribe discovered the nearly perfectly preserved remains of a steppe bison. The remains, belonging to a four-year-old male, are estimated to be about 10,000 years old and represent the most complete specimen of the species in the world. Now known as the Yukagir bison, the creature's internal organs remained almost entirely intact, enabling scientists to harvest tissue samples. The creature likely died from starvation, as evidenced by the carcass's lack of body fat. Another remarkably well-preserved steppe bison was discovered decades earlier, during the summer of 1979 near Fairbanks, Alaska. The Rumens, a mining family, found the ancient animal embedded in ice. Recognizing the importance of their discovery, the family named the bison Blue Babe and contacted University of Alaska paleontologist Dale Guthrie who excavated the carcass with his team's help. Radiocarbon dating put the creature's death at around 36,000 years ago. Wounds on the animal's body suggest that an American lion killed it. The bison died during the winter, when the cold temperatures enabled its carcass to freeze quickly, sparing it from vultures and resulting in its impressive state of preservation. Specialists were determined to preserve the bison as pristinely as possible. Eric Grankvist, then chief taxidermist at the University of Helsinki Zoological Museum in Finland, helped with the efforts, restoring the bison's remains and using expert techniques to prevent decomposition. During this process, researchers extracted samples of the animal's blood and bone marrow. The specimen went on display in 1984 at the University of Alaska Museum of the North, where it remains today in the Gallery of Alaska. To mark the bison's debut, Guthrie and his team prepared a stew with some meat taken from the bison's neck. It tasted much like ordinary beef, according to Guthrie, but was tougher to chew. Thanks, Guthrie, for letting us know. Shockingly, nobody got sick from the prehistoric cuisine, meaning it must have been safe for consumption even after 36,000 years. Related to the modern-day bisons that roam North America and Northern Europe, 
the extinct steppe bison evolved at the beginning of the last ice age, around a million years ago. It had much larger horns than its modern counterparts, but was similar in body size. The species went extinct around 8,000 years ago. Number 3. Pegasus Wreckage On October 8, 1970, pilots flying the Pegasus, a C-121 Lockheed Constellation plane, were faced with a tough decision. Whether or not to fly onward in the face of a fierce oncoming Antarctic storm or not. Due to a fuel shortage, flying back to New Zealand was not an option, so the pilots continued along their planned route. Soon enough, visibility became non-existent amid whiteouts of snow and ice, and the heavy winds jostled the plane around so badly, parts ripped off mid-air. Luckily, the pilots managed to safely land the rapidly descending plane on the frozen floor. Altogether, there were 80 people on the aircraft, and nobody suffered any major injuries. The shaken survivors continued on with their lives, but the airplane was left behind at the crash site. The runway and airfield at McMurdo were renamed after Pegasus, but excess summer melt caused Pegasus Field to close in 2014. The Pegasus sits at its final resting place outside McMurdo Station to this day, often concealed by layers of ice and snow. It's a popular backdrop for selfies, however, meaning many people are willing to clean the ice and snow off the plane for a photo op. Number 2. Ancient Rainforest Around 90 million years ago during the Cretaceous period, Antarctica contained a thriving, swampy rainforest full of vegetation, standing in stark contrast to the seemingly lifeless modern-day landscape. In an April 2020 study published in the journal Nature, researchers announced the discovery of remnants of this rainforest in a sediments core sample collected in February 2017 in West Antarctica. Ancient forest soil within the sample contained abundant fossilized plant pollen and spores, including evidence of the first flowering plants found at such high southern latitudes. Additionally, using CT scan technology, scientists detected a dense network of fossilized plant roots. They're so well preserved, the researchers were able to observe individual cell structures. The ancient forest was located roughly 560 miles from the South Pole at the time, yet its climate was favorable, with an average temperature of 54 degrees Fahrenheit and summer temperatures hitting a high of around 66 degrees Fahrenheit. The climate was much hotter than it is today, with tropical sea temperatures hitting as high as 95 degrees Fahrenheit and sea levels sitting 560 feet higher than they do now. Sediment cores from the West Antarctic rainforest show that the region received moderately abundant rainfall and that it was likely blanketed in thick, lush vegetation. But how did plant life survive the four months of darkness that the continent experienced annually? At the time, Antarctica contained no significant ice sheets and carbon dioxide concentrations were high, making this mild environment possible even during the continent's periods of darkness. For scientists, one major unanswered question remains. What caused the Earth to cool back down and the ice sheets to reform? Number 1. Frolicking Fish A photograph of frozen fish embedded in a four-foot wall of ice went viral in 2017, nearly two years after it originally appeared on the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service National Wildlife Refuge System Facebook page. Yikes, that's not very catchy. The image displays dead fish positioned in numerous directions and at various angles, appearing as if they had suddenly frozen into place one day. Photographer and kindergarten teacher Kelly Preheim originally snapped the picture in 2015 in South Dakota's Lake Andes National Wildlife Refuge. She took the photograph at the end of a particularly brutal winter, according to the Weather Channel. Preheim's image received renewed interest two years later, when the Department of Interior shared it on Twitter. According to the photographer herself, the fish died due to depleted oxygen levels in the lake resulting from drought. The lake's thick ice blocked out the sun's rays, preventing algae and other aquatic plants from growing and further lowering oxygen levels in the water. Fish and other species died and floated to the water's surface, and their decomposing remains used up yet more oxygen as they became encrusted in ice. As the ice continued to expand amid cold weather, it pushed toward the shore and the slab containing frozen fish buckled and went vertical, in Preheim's words. As sad as the fish's deaths may seem, their remains attracted bald eagles, gulls, and other animals to the area. Previously ravaged by an overpopulation of invasive fish species, the lake and its surroundings had a chance to reset thanks to the drought. Thanks for watching! 
Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up to see more like this. See you soon. Bye!